I don't know. Problem. Uh, so this is the uh, February 27th meeting of the Board of Public Works. We're being videographed by... Uh, from the North North Neighborhood of Street Association. <laughs> I, I thank the chair for helping me with the camera. Uh, first, for your approval, the minutes of the February 13th meeting. I move for a second. Discussion, comments? I didn't see anything. Okay. All in favor of accepting it? Aye. Aye. Mike didn't see anything. Ah. Say no more. Ah. Um, <coughs> so, the, the big piece of paper here is just FYI. It's a look at the debt service for the water and sewer departments. Uh, it's kind of interesting to follow it through. Um, You're reading my mind. That was a question. It's, it's, there's re at some point, we'll probably have a discussion about this stuff. Um, for example, in the second block down, if you look at the debt service projections for the water fund, in the lower section, there's some proposed additions to the debt. What if we uh, start construction on the Upper Roberts Meadow or the West Waitley or the Mount Street Reservoir dams? What would that, you know, how would that impact things? So we haven't agreed to spend this money yet. Mm -hmm. And at the point where we were going to spend the money, there would probably be a good discussion to be had about Really? The Mountain Street Reservoir, is that the next thing that we should spend money on? Or maybe the fact that we don't have a second main of bringing water in from the reservoirs to the city might be something that would be more important than doing one of the dams. Yeah. So this is all preparatory to initiating that kind of conversation at some point. It's, it's a necessity, really. Where do these initiatives come from? The dams? Oh, just... The, just who, you know th this list of proposals because clearly you have you have on on your mind some other options that might be of, of higher priority. So who is submitting these as the top sort of four new items for consideration? They're actually not new. They're actually from the FY13 budget and the assumptions that were made. Okay. So even though we didn't undertake that debt service, it was some projects that we were looking and anticipating to do. Uh, fiscal year 13, 14, that didn't materialize. So <clears throat> these these probably were initialized within within your department That's at correct. some point. Okay. And approved by the board. Okay. But we haven't finalized anything as far as going forward with exactly these priorities gotcha. and exactly these. There's still plenty of time to discuss this. Right, so Chris, this is also part of the process of looking at projected rate increases for the future. Uh, yeah, I, can see, I can see that coming. Yeah. 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 All right. But didn't we have some engineering studies on this too? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we've had all yeah. these two engineering yeah. studies. So it's not done. just kind of somebody's brain on this. No, but this is this is the this is my first go around yeah, looking yeah, yeah, at the yeah. budget from yeah. its inception. So yeah. I'm just trying to yeah. just try to figure out where it's where it's so item it's seven, for example, it goes back to those engineering. Right. <laughs> but what but the, what the engineer does is he looks at the dams in, in not as in within the global picture, but merely he's here to look at dams. So he might say, "Man, you need a new dam." Right. But a guy looking at the water main say, "Wow, you really need to replace that water main." And so at, at some point we have to say, "Let's organize them in this order." Um, okay, so I just that's what this is for. Ned had printed some out, and we thought it might be interesting background to just start taking a look at it and thinking about it since we're in the budget season. Um, further comments? Jim? Sure, well, I guess since you asked. Um, just as a follow-up uh, to Chris's question about the projects, there's all these master planning different reports that we've been doing that have been providing us a good basis to determine what the needs are of the city. And the real trick now, as Terry is indicating, is to come up with sort of what are the priorities when you put them all together, like the dams or the water mains or treatment or whatever they are, to look at everything and what the impact on the rates are and then figure out what your multi-year 
got the building plans coming in. So it's a real balance. From what we've had the dams in prior budgets up front, but now we're finding about other projects that are expensive as well, and some of those might be a higher priority than one of the dam projects, for example. So we really need to look at everything together. The good news is I mean, we have a lot of great information from the companies we've been working on in terms of projects that we need and what their estimated costs are. Okay, so change order number one to contract 294-12 to Caracas Construction for the North Street reconstruction in the amount of $110,900. Second. This is a change order that came out of uh, conversations with the community before the project started. Approval by the mayor to uh, solicit funds from Chapter 90 to pay for, instead of asphalt uh, curbing and uh, asphalt sidewalks, this will go to granite curbing and concrete sidewalks in the neighborhood. So um, it's something the neighborhood wanted. I told the neighborhood that we got approval from the mayor through the Chapter 90 process. We would do this. The prices are actually quite good. Uh, uh, Caracas Construction held to his original values for very small quantities. So the uh, the cost differential between the two was, I mean, the vertical granite curbing is the most expensive part of it. But there really was no real cost increase to going from bituminous to concrete sidewalks. Usually concrete sidewalks are twice the cost of bituminous. So that's what this change order is for. Um, all the utilities are in the ground on North Street right now. So the big push this spring is to be putting in the sidewalks, the curbing, and the new roadway. And where does Chapter 90 come into it? Chapter 90 is state funds that we receive each year for uh, buying particular types of road equipment. Uh, engineering studies and for pavement work, building roadways. Okay, so this doesn't come out of our. It does not come out of our general fund. That's correct. When, when will this project be finished? I don't know that date, but I assume it'll be in the fall. Oh, so it should be this, this year. year oh, definitely be finished this year. Yeah. I was actually talking to Felix about this last night. He said the contractor's scheduled date is July, but as he put it. He's had contract. He's had problems with those estimates in the past. Sure. It might rain. That's what he said. It might. It might rain. <laughs> More likely than it's done. Um, it's coming from Chapter 90 funds, but are we choosing to spend it on this as opposed to something else we could use the Chapter 90 funds for? Yes, it is. And so, how did we make the determination? This was. I'm just curious. I'm not questioning. This, this was a neighborhood priority that was mm -hmm. brought to us through our public meetings. Mm -hmm. And uh, we told them that we would bring this up to the mayor after we com we got a committed price from the uh, contractor, mm -hmm. which we got. And the mayor approved this moving forward. He approved, sees the final approval of Chapter 90 funds to be expended, not for the department. We put the request for us. He actually does the final signature. This is about a third of the... Chapter 90? No. This $900,000 yeah. represents about 10% of our annual allotment. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't it, wasn't it way lower for a while? It was. One year we only got $260,000. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. it was like $300,000. Right now there's a there's a 10-year, not contract, but 10-year commitment. Right now we receive just a little over a million dollars each year. Nice. Um, all right, so oh, go ahead. Just one more question. So the, asphalt, the concrete sidewalks and the the granite as opposed to asphalt curbing, those will have a longer lifespan and be, be worth having that investment of 90? They have a longer longevity. They definitely will last longer than bituminous and bituminous curbing, especially with uh, plowing activity. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, as I recall, when we were doing the Elm Street uh, project with Smith, he gave me some information from 1955, I think, when Elm Street was last reconstructed, and that's when the granite curb went in, and that granite curb is still there, and it's not in concrete, it's just stuck in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so good use, good investment. Well, the thing is, if you reconfigure something, you pull those pieces out, if you have the right contractor, you can reuse them again. Right. right. And that's also our current subdivision standards, if you were to build a new subdivision, it's all going to be granite curbing in it for longevity reasons. Contract for a low profile truck body with JC Madigan in the amount of $52,200. Okay. 
This is to replace the current utility body uh, on the truck that are forming for the highway division, or excuse me, streets division drives. Uh, his current box body is all rotted out. Uh, we're going to take it off. We're going to use the existing lift gate on it, so we're not incurring that new cost. It's just a new box body being installed with all the cabinets and doors. All in favor of approving the contract? Aye. Aye. A uh, contract for rubber chip seal at BHB in the amount of $6,300. This is a new roadway project for the city that we are looking to do on one, one of two roads, either Kennedy Road or Sylvester Road. It's called a rubberized chip seal. It uses uh, recycled tires. And basically, if you've seen, like, uh, the old road in the hill towns, they do chip seal, or, uh, chip seal with oil and stone. It's the same type of thing, but they use a rubberized product instead of oil. Um, West Hampton did one three years ago. I've been watching it. It's holding up very well. It has about the, half the cost of traditional asphalt, and the lifespan is about two-thirds of asphalt. So in the long run, it is a better cost uh, associated with uh, implementing this. So we want to try it on one of the city streets and see its effectiveness. Like I said, I've been watching... Uh, Southampton Road and West Hampton for three years now, and uh, for a uh, overlay like this, it's flawless still. But what happens is with the rubberized chip seal, the water can't penetrate in below beneath that chip seal, and therefore it doesn't cause cracking and potholes and so on like traditional pavement does when water gets in and freeze expands it. Oh, cool. Is it sealing cracks or just the total no, overcoat? It's a total overcoat. We go through first and do a skim coat of the roadway to take care of any imperfections and potholes that might be there. Then they come back and do this full overlay of this material. How it's not thick? Oh, it's not that thick at all. Oh, oh really? Yeah, it's just the aggregate and the uh, rubberized seal that's there. I would say that it's probably no more than a uh, half inch at best. So it still does have, it's still in, it's the aggregate. Yes. It's not like a synthetic turf field that has no. EPDM chips in it. It's a stone aggregate that's being used. So it's the urethane rubber or something like that? It's uh, recycled tires is what it is. But how do they make it into an emulsion? I couldn't tell you that, Terry. I don't know. Hmm. But we've been working with VHB. Uh, they do have quite a bit of experience with this. and. So this is the consulting firm, right? This is a consulting firm, and what they do in this particular... Um, uh, contract underneath this they've created they will be creating bid specifications for us uh, any kind of pre-construction services uh, at $115 an hour uh, some testing of the materials and lastly they'll do construction monitoring because we've never done a project like this so this is a learning curve for the DPW also so this is a design oh, contract it's a design contract it is not a the actual no, we'll go out to bid separately for the construction of the roadway itself. This is design services and uh, construction monitoring. Okay. I'm just curious about this, this size. How many miles would, be, would we be looking at? Or are we just looking at specific locations? Um, we were looking, we looked at a number of roads. We looked at Reservoir Road, Chesterfield Road, Sylvester Road, um, and Kennedy Road. Um, we wanted to do one street to start. What we don't know at the moment is on Kennedy Road, there is at least four culvert crossings and how the condition of those culverts and what we might have to do, especially environmental permitting. Mm -hmm. Versus Sylvester Road, we've already done one replacement. We have one more to go, which is doesn't require uh, any kind of permits from uh, Army Corps or uh, uh, wetlands permits covered under a generic notice. So if we run into trouble on Kennedy Road as far as permitting, we'll push it over to Sylvester Road instead. So is this like a generic design so we could pick and choose how many miles we do and mm -hmm. where? Yep. Cool. That makes sense. So it's not like oiled stump. They don't put down rubber particles and then spray oil on it. It's an no, emulsion it's, that they it, spread. It's all mixed and the stones laid on top. And um, what I've been told from the West Hampton Highway Superintendent and from VHB uh -huh. is that you don't have a, a big loss of product from this because it, the, the material, the stone, really stays with that rubberized product versus oil and stone, you have a huge cleanup cost actually then because not all of it gets attached to the oil. Mm -hmm. okay. this, this is unrelated, really, but I just wondered if you have any comments on the Sunderland problem where the 
Right. How was the Amherst problem? Amherst. Right. Um, I didn't go view that. I believe Laura Hansen from our engineering staff went over and saw part of that. Um, I don't know what caused those imperfections yet. I think they're looking to see what happened too. Okay, so all in favor of approving this design contract for the rubber chip seal? Aye. Aye. Uh, next change order number one to contract 239-13 for plumbing fixtures to direct plumbing in the amount of $5,700. That would be for four services. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> this is a change order to the plumbing fixture upgrade project for city buildings. Board approved this contract a few meetings ago for the installation of Water efficient is something missing in this um, contract. What? There's some, a page missing in this contract. Um, it's for the installation of, I forget how many, because I don't have the page. Um, it's for the, the, uh, the installation of um, some undefined number of urinals which weren't included in the original bid package. So we had we had inventory to a certain number of urinals that needed to be replaced. It's one gallon per flush style fixtures. And it's uh, increasing the change orders to add that to the project. This is all from monies from a grant? Actually, the urinals aren't covered by the grant. The, the, the urinals will be covered by the Water Enterprise Fund. The toilets were covered by the grant. an obligation uh, to install water efficient fixtures was an obligation of the city's uh, water management as a permit. So they were given a certain amount of time to install water efficient fixtures in city buildings. So it was part of that initiative. Water management permit obligation. So we have a permit if you want to learn something. We have a permit that allows us to have a public water supply, or we have a permit that allows us to withdraw water from the from the Connecticut River Basin. So our ability okay. to take water from the reservoirs or from the wells is permitted by the state. So the initial permit allows us to withdraw a certain number of gallons of water every year, and there are a number of conditions on that permit. Many conditions, in fact. That's the source of our uh, our drought advisory. Water restrictions in the summertime and many other things. So that was a condition that uh, city buildings be upgraded. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All in favor of approving the contract for more urinals? Aye. Aye. Okay. Contract for the North King Street water main to Jack and Carlton Sons in the amount of $230,000. Move approval. This is a water main improvement project on North King Street um, that we had bid recently. And we received 12 bids. It was quite a bit of interest from the project. Um, the low bidder was Gonzales at the $230,901. And the high bid was $381,640. Wow. And the engineering estimate that we put together was $277,300. So we were pleased with the interest. and. In um, pleased with the low bidder, and Gonzales is a contractor that we've worked with a lot in the past, and they do good work, so the general fronts are in pretty good shape. That's quite a bit of difference between low and high, as well as your estimate. Could you pinpoint where that 277000 difference was? I mean, for your estimate compared to... So I, I can, let me read off some of the numbers. The, the um, if you throw out the high, mm -hmm. the next high was 288,615. Okay. Right. So there was a grouping right around from 230 to 240. And then there was uh, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then there was 6 that were in like the 265 to 275 range. 
So it was really actually a very tight range. So we're pretty pleased with the, the bids. I think our estimate was really spot on, actually. So, so could you see where Concalves, Concalves, did I say that right? Um, where their, could, could you tell where they were under bidding compared to other people in terms of the, in terms of your estimate and the other, and the other bids? There was, yeah, there's a bid breakdown. So you could go item by item and see where they were low or see where they had estimated that they'd be able to do something more efficiently. It's a great time to get a project, you know, in the winter time. That's why there's so much interest. People are trying to line up work from the construction season. Right. So, <clears throat> what's that? Yes. Um, so it's, two, it's almost a quarter of a million dollars. Um, some of this has been set aside. Are we going to pay for it or borrow money for it? We are paying for this out of the water line replacement account. Okay. We traditionally fund that at three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand dollars each year, right. and that's where that money is coming from. So it's not being borrowed. Okay. Um, any further questions? All in favor of approving the contract to rebuild the North King Street water line? Aye. Um, uh, one year extension of contract three sixty two dash eleven for sludge disposal to Moortown landfill. This is the second year of a three-year contract. Actually, it's yeah. a one-year contract with two one-year renewables. So this is the second year of a renewable with uh, more town landfill. Pardon me? It's gonna be the last this is the last year. Okay. Excuse me. This is the last year of the one years. So uh, when we actually entered this contract, it was substantial savings for the city. Uh, we were paying on the order of about five hundred thousand dollars a year to get rid of our sludge, and with this contract, it was about four hundred thousand. So I would recommend that we move forward with the last one-year extension. Why is this the last one-year extension? Because we can only do it in three-year terms maximum. Then it would be rebid. We'll be rebid <laughs> sometime, probably in November, December this year. in favor of approving the, the one-year extension to the sludge disposal company. Aye. 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 All right, next change order number two to contract 259.08 for phase two dam safety inspections, the GCA, in the amount of $6,000. This is a, the one from last week, last go around. So I move we approve it. Second. And I, did everyone get a letter from Mike? Yes. yes. Mike Parsons sent around an email saying Maybe was Mike that he uh, supports approving the, after oh. reading the follow-up documentation. I did not see that. I, I did either. not see that either. Did you guys have any comments? No problem. Did, it, did everybody see the GCA letter? Did yes. you want to yes. elaborate? Yes. Or, uh, I should see that. Was, okay. was it, was and, and the project was spread out not because they didn't complete it, but because the city was yeah. driving the schedule. Alright, so all in favor of approving the uh, increase in that contract by $6,000. Aye. 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 Uh, old business. The next year's budget. We've been working on this FY14 budget. I was hoping to have rough drafts to you tonight so we could start the discussion and set up the morning meetings. I was supposed to have a budget meeting with the mayor yesterday, and it got postponed until tomorrow morning. Uh, we do not have the direct indirect, so we actually can't craft the budget without that information um, at this point. Uh, we have given him Amory on and line item numbers, personal services numbers, and so on, but we really can't generate that budget until we have the direct indirect from City Hall. So, is everyone clear on what directs and, and indirects are? That salary. It's like the benefit packages, the health insurance, uh, some amount of money for administration at City Hall. The direct would be salaries, the indirect would be the council. There's also a pilot in there too, payment and move taxes for mm -hmm. facilities within the city uh, boundaries, things like that. Okay. So hopefully tomorrow we'll have some direction on that, and if so, um, uh, what I'll do is uh, send out an email and see if we can start having some morning meetings. 
we all set up a doodle thing that we can do it. We just have to have 72 hours notice to City Hall for posting. Any questions? <clears throat> a last thing on that. Um, the general budget, I showed you the draft last meeting, I handed you a draft of that. Even though we are level funded, it shows that we have a $40,000 overage this year. I'll find out tomorrow what I have to cut or need to cut uh, to make up that $40,000 because it is supposed to be a level funded budget. Oh, once you have the direct and indirects, you'll know what. Right, so what happened was the mayor that wasn't budgeted, there was uh, a 1.5% pay raises given out last year. Those were never budgeted in the FY13 budgets that need to be taken out on the FY14 budget. Mm -hmm. Things like that. <laughs> it's a schematic of your uh, All right, thank you, Ned. Yep. Uh, private Ways, we're meeting on Saturday. And you are. A very ambitious meeting. I know. Yeah. Yeah, easy for you to say since yeah. you won't be here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and by the way, and one every ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should go for the day. Uh, well, it's just all, all of the new ones stayed and all of the old ones got added. Um, Jim will be there. Your historical yeah, really. synopsis. I, I, am I will try to give yeah. the history to Jim. Um, I had an obligation in Boston with my son at the Berkeley Jazz Fest. Mm. That's um, good. Is he playing? He is. Oh, okay. Really? What does he play? Drums. Oh. It's a uh, high school competition. There's about 100 bands from across the country that come in and compete. That's it's a fun great. event. That's great. Okay, so at 9 o'clock we'll meet here. Hey, well, like 8.45? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 8.45 here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good no, uh, time, no time for chocolate croissants, though. Oh, I, I was just thinking about get it. Get them early. Nothing, you better get them nothing. before. I, I think if you did Church and Edwards very quickly, because you've already had the hearing out there once, that you might have some time in that 10 o'clock range. I okay. think what makes more sense to me is to somebody that I'd like to see the engineer was to bring Pony up and those. just go get the damn thing before we even get started. To the point. Because then we'd be certain to have them because... Are you volunteering, Gary? I am. Uh, okay. Because the place that I would go and would otherwise be sold out would be... Uh, well, what about the car? Uh, the Tampa Cup? No, uh, Firehouse. Oh, that's good. Whatever that yeah, is. yeah, the old Firehouse. Where is that called? Wood wood star. Wood star. Wood star. <laughs> the wooden hole. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they have, I don't think so. Anyway, yeah, I, I should do that. Yeah. Well, then what about coffee? That, wow. that we can get anywhere. Yeah. Okay. That's like coffee. Bring your own. You're right. Yeah, one more over, one more over right. at Edwards. I can go get a box of coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry. I like Dunkin' Donuts. What star has those breakfast bars that are shorter decadent? Oh, they have some very good stuff. All right. Ooh, I'm up there. All right, back to subject matter. <laughs> oh, yeah, then we'll have fights. I may have to go talk to my banker. Let's talk about it. Okay. Are we set on that? Yeah. Stormwater and flood control. The uh, mayor has appointed a uh, task force mm -hmm. to look at all of the uh, options for how we, the city could possibly pay for the mandates. That, that committee uh, of which Chris is a member will be meeting on Thursday, a week from tomorrow. Um, Jim will be on hand to assist. So they did finally ask for staff support? I got a cute little end light. It was amazing. It was quite pleased. A little animated. Um, anyway, so that's... And they, they're... Let me think. What, what, what else is there to know about this? Decision-making timeline? Well, Short. they're hoping it's like 90 days. Short. Um, maybe it's something that potentially, if there were some decisions made, it could be phased in mm -hmm. beginning of the next calendar year. Does it require voting with? City Council would have to support it if it were an enterprise fund. Yep. Um, if the, but the group could 
decide, no, let's keep, keep things as they are. The idea is to let the group draw their own conclusions, and should they be intrigued with the idea of a fee, make a recommendation as to how that fee should be structured. Flat rate, flexible, based on acreage. So, okay. but Chris is up to the task. Yeah, I expect burning poo on my front porch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, and then uh, I got a call, actually Jim did also from the Gazette today. They're very interested in the solid waste planning process. Would that be... You mean the, the layout though? No. Yeah. Those guys. Those guys. I'd be happy to talk to you. Yeah. If you'll have yeah, absolutely. Um, staff, well, at a previous board meeting, we had indicated that we'd get back to the board with, um, you know, a date for transition and what we had hoped to accomplish here on our Western Wipo Ridges farm capacity. And what we have decided is that on April 15th, we will begin implementing changes at the transfer station that the board voted to approve back in January. So essentially, six days a week operation at the Locust Street Transfer Station, Glendale Road Transfer Station, will only be open on Saturdays to accept uh, difficult to manage waste only. So on April 15th, which is a Monday, we'll no longer accept municipal solid waste or recycling mixed paper bottles and cans. We will be taking those at Glendale Road. And, uh, so we'll be implementing that change. We're going to be sending a postcard to each one of the uh, current vehicle permit holders with information about what the change is and, and the date and what the what the changes in the program are going to be. Um, as far as the landfill operation goes, uh, it's likely that the landfill will continue to operate after April 15th, and we're just going to continue to operate the landfill until the point at which it's closed. We have no further capacity. So the changeover in the transfer station operations, we felt it was better if we had a hard date. It would make communicate, communicating the change easier to the residents, which was the reason we did that. And then the landfill, I think all of our commercial customers understand that the landfill, every day that they're out there, they're saying that it's, it's getting closer. We can't predict the actual day that it will close, but as we get closer, we'll, we'll know it, it's, it's highly a function of the amount of waste that comes into the site. And that's pretty standard in the industry. I've been working on landfills for quite a long time. And people run them until they're full, and then they close the gate. And that's what we intend on doing. So it might go another month beyond. Could be another month. Um, any idea of when the uh, postcards are, are going to go out? Uh, hopefully soon, early March. So we're looking at trying to get some, it'll, it'll be a, an article in the Gazette, actually, and I, I, don't, I talked to Chad today, I don't know how long it'll take him to get something in the paper, but um, we may look at running an advertisement uh, or getting additional press coverage between now and April 15th, making information available at the transfer stations and communicating to people that way, too. But we figured six weeks, you know, if we hit people a couple of times, they should, they should sink in. Yeah, so the, uh, the April 15th, the program that the board had approved included um, increase of the bag fees by 50%, so we're looking at making that change at the same time as we change the service. Um, we're also looking at changing the bag vendor. We'll continue to have sporadic issues with Waste Zero as the bag vendor, so we're looking at uh, other state contract um, companies to purchase bags from in the future, and we're looking at transitioning to that um, right now. And the new bags might be the kind that you tie, like the lab bags. That's what we have now. Without the drawstring. Right. Do you not think of our bag then? No, Mimi says no. I think no. what you're referring to is they'll have like the flapped type things, like the, the ears. little. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. They're getting samples. So yeah, they won't have a drawstring. Right. I'm saying that we're going to go from the drawstring to flaps, probably. Okay. The people that make the drawstring that, that we're currently using are the only ones offering the drawstring. That's right. Yeah, I don't see the, I don't see the need for the drawstring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
we just take a regular trash can and buy it anyway. Karen's been busy. We have got samples from the other vendors. We've taken a look at them. She's also been calling other communities that have used these other vendors on the state contract. Just getting some good feedback about the other companies. So um, we'll be, like I said, we'll be moving toward a change on those and rolling that out shortly. David? But we, we have, or Karen said, we have quite a large inventory of some of the sites. I've forgotten the numbers. So we want to not order them until we can see that we really need them. We have figured out the transition based on current inventory levels. We have more inventory in some bags than others. Obviously, we want to make sure that that inventory, um, you know, gets drawn down before we order more. Right. But depending on the bag size, the inventory varies. Yeah. And the new, if we do switch vendors, um, that might change the way the whole the uh, financial side of it goes. The current vendor offered to make the bag, stock the bag, ship the bags and handle the billing. If I understand it correctly, none of the under, other vendors do the billing piece. So we may wind up managing the billing from this end. Is that correct? That's correct. They will build the, the new company, the, all of the other companies, build inventory and ship. We would do the billing. But hopefully with a better bank. So at the reuse committee, we had some discussion. I, I had to leave at 9 and out. So something about the different bays. I thought you were going to talk about it today, and our MJ talked to you, and you were going to talk about whatever that confusion was. Uh, the, my understanding uh, is that the search for a reuse location at Locust Street continues. And there is some discussion about rearranging one of the bays out here, you know, to, to facilitate a small reuse center. And that was discussed at the meeting. Um, I, don't, I didn't hear what happened after the meeting. I talked to MJ before the meeting, and I said that we were generally supportive of trying to make something happen out there, provided it didn't impact other operations, and yeah. we could fit something in there. <coughs> MJ said that there were people interested in volunteering to help staff it and manage it and take care of it, and it sounded great. So okay. um, I think there's some movement in that direction to, to make that sort of an added service area. Gene? Yeah, I just wanted to report it. Um, I just left the Capital Improvements um, Committee meeting. I do have another life. But I left there to come and just got here as quick as I could before you guys left. And to tell you that uh, I've got a lot of the new facility, got a lot of play tonight. Um, in, uh, in terms of uh, funding, how to go about it, um, in things including such as pavement out until 2019, um, stormwater, uh, uh, CDBG, you know, this stuff is going to be going away with the council on aging, and that might free up some sidewalk money. Uh, just wanted to let you know that they are really, it was Focusing mostly on uh, Rob Osberg. Um, I went to see what they were going to discuss, and um, they had a lot of questions, so I did my best. Um, but it went along very well, I think, so I got, you got quite a bit of play. Most of it came from uh, Rob Osberg. And, uh, so, and Susan Wright, I met with her for about an hour today and discussed most everything in the sun coming down. Um, so we'll see what happens. Just want to let you know they're still... They're thinking about still it. Kick it still, st still kicking it around. Uh, but it does have, but it did seem as though that the committee did have a pretty high priority um, on this. So that's where it stands, and we'll take it from there. The next meeting, I think, is going to be on the 13th. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to let you know that before I go home and try and eat. Well, thank you. <laughs> It's great. It's high priority of ours, too. Oh. <laughs> so. Gary, is there anything that we didn't cover you think we should cover? No? Actually, there is. Um, and maybe I should do this offline with Ned. But I learned last night at the uh, the tree committee meeting that, that the, the tree
people hand and budget such that it is is derived from profits that come from the landfill. Does that sound accurate? We have a green fund of ten thousand dollars each year from the landfill that supported planting trees. Were there any other little pots of money like that that are going to dry up as a result of the landfill closing, or we need to start thinking about you know the impact it's going to have on our ability to do that kind of work, or whether it's just going to go just away. tree work, or no, j just broadly. I mean, obviously, I worship the trees, but I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about it, it. I had not heard of this being sort of that there was a for-profit component of the of the of the landfill and that, that, that there were resources that were being drawn off of that operation that were funding other activities and I'm wondering mm -hmm. how serious a situation are we are we confronted because obviously you know the trees are one thing but I don't have my budget notes in front of me but one of the things that Jim and I talked about the other day is the hazardous waste collection events that have been historically funded by the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund and they're open to all city residents and how do we actually fund that in the current enterprise fund when it's only paid by a select few residents in Northampton that use the transfer station going forward. So that's a conversation with the mayor about, out of the general side, funding hazardous waste collection days for the common good of the community and not just those people that are paying into the transfer station fees because it's always been a community event. So there's things like that that we're discussing also that could be losses to the community. Chris, I think the biggest... Uh Perhaps the biggest line items that the city's been planning for since the landfill was going to be closed is, is related to uh, the host community fee, which was several hundred thousand dollars that you steal in the general fund from the enterprise fund. And it was also, I forget what the number was for uh, directs and indirects, but another couple hundred thousand dollars or something every year that went into the general fund from the enterprise fund. So sort of the profit component that you're talking about funded general government activities basically through those two line items and there's a number of other you know things that you know Ned had mentioned like household has its waste collection some other things that are community-wide benefits that we feel shouldn't necessarily be picked up only by the people who buy a vehicle permit for their you know a sticker to, to, to use the facility but in my mind those are should be citywide costs because when we have those types of programs everybody in the city is encouraged to participate right so how do you get how do you get how do you get to there? That's a good question. Good question. Closing the landfill you created a gap of over eight hundred thousand dollars, and there was no discussion about that. The whole discussion seemed to turn on environmental potential environmental impacts, and, and there was never a credible. Yeah, that statement is becoming increasingly aware. Uh, it's yeah. obvious to me that 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 was the, the point of the discussion. A little bit late. Yeah, well. Um, so, that's great. What about the fruit trees? Well, um, the, the, uh, the, the, the group that was interested in, in accessing public land for um, um, production of food uh, was encouraged to um, come share their, their vision with the Board of Public Works, and uh, I haven't heard anything from them yet. Uh, they were that they they did encounter some some reservations about you know um, uh, waste and maintenance on fruit trees and I think they heard that um, I don't know, it's it's an issue um, I think they need to show us a really good working model um, where it's just, it's sustainable on a volunteer basis and I think that's a pretty I think that's a pretty high bar um, certainly the members of the the, the tree committee. Um, you know, embrace the concept, but we're, we're, we're pretty candid about their reservations about how, how, how it worked on a practical level. So, yeah, return on investment. Yeah. And then we also had um, the volunteers in last night. Um, Andrew Putnam wasn't there, but uh, Rob Postal is a neighbor of mine who are involved in gifting trees to the community and, and his desire to maybe work together with them, but they're really focused on shade trees and, and they can't find a fruit tree that falls into that category. So. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, anything? Sure. Stone and ice operations. Uh, there was a request for deficit spending that was approved by the city council last Thursday night. <coughs> Excuse me. Our budget is, is gone at this point. This last storm, we estimated it's about one hundred fifty thousand dollars in costs. Uh, we did have an initial preliminary assessment done for FEMA. 
and it was due today. And for the first 48 hours of the storm, our costs were $97,000 and change. So if that gets approved, we'll see typically 100% reimbursement on a snow event of that money. But what we won't see is that the, the work that was done after 48 hours, which is clean up the side streets, downtown clean up, snow removal, things of that nature. Just so you're aware of that. So where are we roughly year to date for snow and ice? Well, we had a budget of 426, and I would say that we're probably pushing the 500,000 right now. So we're, we're over budget at this point. Um, last year, the mayor did allow a $100,000 increase into the snow and ice budget, trying to make it a little more realistic than it has been for the past many, many, many years. And two years ago, it was an $800,000 bill. And last year, we got off actually pretty lightly with, uh, I think, just a hair under $400,000 we expended last year. So it's highly variable. Typically, Chris, they they just budget a nominal amount. It used to be like one hundred and fifty thousand. Three twenty-six. It was actually it was below that. It was. Uh, I'm sorry, like fifteen years ago. Uh, I think it was. When I started, I think it was two fifty a year. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I was. It was clear that that was only a placeholder. Yeah. So. And we but we've been asking for a more. Something really? closer to what we anticipate spending. Uh, okay. So. That's that's great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. mentioned David Murphy was quite active in the, uh, in the, the building. conversation in yeah. the building piece. And uh, Susan Wright's been very active on it just since we met in the mayor's office. That'd be great. Uh, I've got nothing. Although I saw that the uh, side mirror on your vehicle is already replaced. And yeah. It looks beautiful. Man, I could not see a bat. Uh, now, that's a big honking vehicle. And there's no rear view. Yeah. Lost my mirror. Yes, we know. I had a ride in a 2013 pickup truck, and when the guy got out of the car, the mirror folded in. <laughs> they, this, they make a version of mine that do that. We should have it. I think you probably have to pay extra. All right. Adjourn. Yeah. Move to adjourn. We have to sign this. All in favor? It's not the record.